Do, so do we usually say a prayer? Or a yes. Oh, okay. Um, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the Sabbath, for a chance to rest into you and into your love. May we always know that we are your people and find rest in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Just remember to give me that pillow back when you're done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, no, you can have it. You can borrow it for the rest of the service. That may help your family. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's right here if anybody wants it. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said, apparently, you know, if everybody in church was laid out end to end on the pews, they'd be a lot more comfortable. Um, it's nice to be here with you today. I am... I, I have known this congregation actually for a while, and when I've had a Sunday off, I would come down and worship here with my family. And um, I've, I've known a couple of your members who were pastors up by me, Ken Martin and Tom Bailey, and their families. And so I, um, I don't feel like a stranger here completely this morning, and it's good to be here with you. I, I work in the Synod office. My job, I, I do the same thing that there was a pastor in the Virginia Senate, his name was Chip Gunston. I, I do what Chip did. And working with congregations who are, um, I start new churches, which we're still doing, and I help revitalize existing congregations. We have 77 churches in and around Washington. And that's, that's where I work, that's what I do. Um, actually, and so I was a little surprised. I thought this Sunday would be a lot fewer people here. <laughs> today. Um, it's the Sunday after the 4th of July, after all. You know, it's not known. It's not like Christmas, Easter, and the Sunday after the 4th of July. You don't you usually have as many people here, but it's good to see everybody. Um, and uh, why don't we just start with prayer? Lord, we thank you for this morning, for the Sabbath that you've given to us. We pray that as we gather here in your house, that we might find rest in you, that your spirit may speak to us the truth of your words, and that you may open up our eyes and our ears, our minds and our souls to your will and to your way. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. So, um, worship attendance in the United States is, is down, you may know that. Um, it, is, it was not long ago that when you would ask somebody if they were regularly attending a church service, they would say yes, only if they came every single Sunday. And then, a few years ago, it went to uh, if they came every other Sunday. So if they came twice in a month, they would say, and you ask them, do you go to church regularly? People would say yes. If they came twice. And, and now recently, people will, it was uh, once a month, right? That was how people defined for themselves what regular church attendance was. And so, uh, and more recently, it's actually become even more spread out. So if people come once in a while and they're asked, do you go to church? People will say yes. And so actually the, the, the statistics for worship attendance around the country, it's a little hard to gauge because of those differing opinions in terms of how people define what regular worship attendance is. And uh, by generations, it, it also shifts. So for the builder generation, 65% go to church uh, on a regular basis. For the boomers, 35%. For Gen X, it's 15%. And for Gen Y, Gen Y, so people who are under the age of, what, 24 or so? Do you know what percentage of Gen Y comes to church every Sunday? 4%. 4. 4 percent. These changes are not just in among ELCA Lutherans, and they're not just in mainline denominations, though that there are some exceptions. It's a trend that's been going on since the 1960s, and it doesn't show signs of stopping. 
Now, this is part of the reason why the church created the position that I have, is to try and think about what it is that is happening and how can we shift and think about what we're doing differently. Because something is happening all across America with, with churches and church attendance. And we need to pay attention to it desperately. In the scripture this morning, it says, kind of as almost a throwaway comment, Jesus on the Sabbath, when he went home, he went to the synagogue. And in the Gospels and other places, it said that as a regular thing, Jesus would go to synagogue. It was, of course, expected. A good Jew would go once a week to the synagogue, still today. It's a, it's a habit that is a weekly thing that a person of faith who is Jewish or Christian or Muslim uh, does once a week come to church. But that's been changing. Sabbath keeping is as old as recorded history. It goes back to those Genesis story of the six days that we were, that God created everything. And on the seventh, God rested and then said that in through the, through Moses that on that seventh day, we should rest too. We're people who need to rest. We can't keep going and going and going. And when we do, there are consequences for, for going without rest. We get grumpy. We lose perspective. You um, uh, begin to treat people around you not as well as you should. There's a rhythm to this thing. Work and then rest. Um, so, for Christians, it means to, to take this time um, to abide, to abide in Christ, to abide in the Word of God, and to remember who we are and whose we are, and that, we are, that you are loved um, as a child of God. And, uh, and it's something that we as a nation are forgetting. And when we forget to rest, when we forget to remember who we are and whose we are, we get off course. And I want to suggest to you at least a couple of ways to get back on course and to, re to think about this in a little different way. Now, I realize that I'm preaching here to the choir, right? You all are the people who come to church on the Sunday after the 4th of July. <laughs> so let's just put that out there and say, okay, you, you're, you're in, you're good, right? That, and maybe this is your once-in-a-season time for coming, although I doubt it. Um, uh, but it's important for us to understand that there's a purpose in this, a command in this, a blessing in this, to think about what that is so that we can share it with others, right? That this is, not, this is something that's important to, to think about recovering. It is, first of all, it, it's, it's a law. Right? It was one of the commandments that God gave through Moses. It's, it's not just a suggestion to take some time. It was a commandment. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Right? How did that go? Um, Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For the six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it, made it holy, a holy day out of seven, one given to us. Not just as, not like as a command that we have to do this, but it's a gift to us. The law really is a gift. It is something that has been given to us for our own good. Um, and, it, and that goodness, I think, is something worth, worth remembering. I was on a flight. I, <laughs> I fly um, not nearly enough to get perks, and so I was on this flight. I was coming back from Colombia um, in South America at last year, and there was, uh, and so I was sitting in the middle seat. I pulled the middle seat, right? And um, fortunately, 
there was a, a, a little TV screen in front in my, the seat in front of me. So I got to watch stuff the whole flight and to sleep. And so we all, the three of, there were three of us, there was a woman on my left and a woman on my right. We sat down, everybody put on headphones and just watched the TV in front of us for like four hours, five hours, however long that flight was. <clears throat> As we were getting close to land, they, they shut off the screens. So then what do you do, right? So then you had, like, we had to take the headphones off. And, uh, and the woman sitting to my right started to get really nervous. It, it was a rough landing at the airport. It was a lot of crosswind. And you could feel the, the plane yaw. It went kind of sideways and then straight. And it was bumpy. And she was, she was apparently very scared. And, and she, uh, as we were coming in for a long, slow descent, she, um, she turned to me and she said, uh, will you talk to me? <laughs> and I said, oh, sure. And I said, so what, tell, tell me, what do, what, do you, what do you do? And she said, well, I, she, was a, she said, I'm a human rights lawyer. And I said, oh, what were you doing in Colombia? And she said, well, we were prosecuting um, uh, human traffickers for like a month. And I haven't had a day off in, in all that time. And, this, and the trials are very stressful, as you can imagine. And, um, and she said, what do you do? And I told her. And she said, oh, good. <laughs> like, oh, then we definitely won't crash, because <laughs> planes don't crash with Christians on them, right? Or pastors. And, but all right, that, so that gives her comfort. That's whatever it takes, you know. And she said, um, and I said, uh, I, I said, do you, are, you, are, you, are you a person of faith? Do you go to, to church? She said, well, I'm, I'm Catholic, but I haven't gone in a long, long time. And I said, so you, you, haven't, you haven't taken a day off in a month, and you haven't been to church in forever. I said, this is, this is what happens. We get wrapped around an axle. And she was so scared from, she said, she said, you know, normally I, I'm not afraid of flying, but she said, I'm so tired right now that the fear just kind of welled up inside of her. Fear that was strong enough to reach out to a stranger sitting next to her and, uh, and asking him to talk to her. And so that, that, that sense, of, and I said, you know, um, this thing about resting and going to church is, isn't just a suggestion. <laughs> you know, it was given to us for, for a good reason. And um, I, I had a, a friend who lived in, a, in a, a neighborhood where there was a lot of um, Orthodox Jews who would walk to synagogue on, on a Saturday, you know. And, uh, and they lived across the street from him. And when they would walk to synagogue, they'd come back, and they would spend the whole day at home, just being together as family, eating food and um, reading and being quiet together. And occasionally she, she would see my friend Dan and she'd say, oh, Dan, and she said, Dan would say, you know, how, how is, how's the Sabbath? And she said, oh, Dan, you know, I think this is the best Sabbath we've ever had. And she would always say that. And, and, and you could just, you could tell the goodness that was in that moment for her to spend time with her family, to relax in the Lord, and to have a chance to, to regroup. And when we don't do that, that's when we get into trouble. And we keep going, we keep going. We live in a society that's 24 seven. Remember when there wasn't a 24 hour news channel? <laughs> Remember? Um, and that you could actually, yeah, and there wasn't the internet, so you could actually go for a little while before you knew of everything that was happening everywhere. You could cut off a little bit, disengage. I, I've actually, uh, it doesn't seem that way at the moment, but I've actually begun a sabbatical. <laughs> I, uh, every six or seven years, they, um, they give pastors a little time off sometimes to disengage from the work and to, to just to abide, to, to separate out. It's important to do that, no matter what you do, even as a pastor. If you don't, you lose perspective. And so we come to church, we hear the scripture, we're reminded uh, that we're people who need to rest and to work. We're reminded of, of the way of Christ, the way that is good, the way of forgiveness and truth and mercy and love. 
we're reminded of, of the things that are really important in life that we lose sight of if, if we don't take a moment in the breath. So that's the first thing. Recover maybe a, a sense of the use of the law to guide us. The second is that we have to adjust some of what we're doing on Sunday mornings. And now I'm not going to be real specific here, except to say that we have a gift in thinking about this. I, I, I think that um, we need to be more interactive, that there needs to be more joy, more of a sense of, um, of a chance for people to unpack their lives. That's what I, I think people in part are, are, are looking for and needing. It's not just a chance, I know you all are, are listening right now, and that's really great, but people need a chance also to speak. They need a chance to talk about what's happening in their lives in light of the gospel, in light of the way of Christ, in light of like what it means to, to work constantly and not have a day off. What's that like for you? What's that, what's that been like for you? Um, if, you're, if you have a job that you can't get away from and your boss is texting you at night, what's, what's that like? How can you carve out some time on, on a daily basis and then especially on a weekly basis? Uh, people need a, need a chance to talk about that. So I'll just give that to you to talk about maybe in the car ride on the way home. <laughs> um, you, we, we, need, we have this tradition in, in the Lutheran church called adiaphora. You ever heard that word? It's, it's, a, uh, it's a word that means things that are not really that important. And it... What it means for Lutherans is that Luther said, look, there are some things that are really important and the rest of it really isn't. And what adiaphora means is anything that Christ or the scriptures didn't either command or forbid. It's like whether we use screens or not. They're really helpful. I love screens. But they're adiaphora. So are what I'm wearing, right? Adiaphora. Christ never said, like we, we were going over things at the beginning of the service. How are things done here at this church, right? And, um, and are, the, are the elements on the altar at the end or not? Some churches do it one way, some do, but Christ never said one way or the other. I know you're, you, you're now in between pastors. This is a time to kind of take a step back, abide in Christ, and think about what's really important and what's not. What, what are some of the things that need, you can let go of and the essential things to hold tight to? Uh, we have this tradition called adiaphora. I give it to you uh, to, to think about. Um, and I would say this for our churches, that what Christ said, what, what the Spirit said to Paul um, is true for us too. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness so that I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. And even though we are maybe feeling some weakness as church, as we see some of the trends going on in our churches across the country, I would say to you that in our weakness, there is strength. Because then we don't rely on our own way, but on Christ's. Last thing I want to say, and I'll say this quickly, is... Um, Jesus sent out the 12 and then the 70, right? So, and he said, as, and one of the last things Christ said was that as, um, he said, just as God sent me, so I send you, you, into the world. And this is the way I want you to do it. He said, go out, not by yourself, two by two, <clears throat> and, um, and go and find people who respond to you. Don't spend time with people. He said, you know, if people don't respond to you, just turn around, shake the dust off your feet, and move on. Look for people who respond to you. What I say to this is, for a lot of our people, um, the only people that you know are other Christians. And so for a lot of you, you need to make new friends. <laughs> Push out a little bit. Find some new people. And then get to know them. And I say this to you, don't bring up God. Don't. Don't bring up God. Let them bring up God. And then when they do, be ready to respond. And the way this works is you have to pray about it first. You have to ask God to show you someone in, in, in your life who is ready to hear a good word about God. And you'll know that because they'll bring up God. 
And, and, and when they do then, um, ask God to give you a word to be able to say to them. Let me give you an example. Uh, a couple months ago, I was in Washington, running late for a meeting, and I got a flat tire. And it was on a very busy street in, in D.C. And, uh, and so I, I figured, I was like, um, I, 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 had, I had it all in my mind of how this was going to go. And I was going to change my tire, it was the rear tire, and I was going to do it in record time, and I could still make my meeting. So like the dad in the Christmas story, I got out the tire in the back and the, and the jack, and I knew exactly how I was going to do it. I put the jack under, it was one of those scissor jacks, and I began to, and I thought, well, this is going to be like NASCAR. I'm just going to put it under, crank it up, get, get that, that tire changed, and put the new one on. And as I was doing, as I was beginning to put the scissor jack under and crank it up, this man came up to me out of nowhere. I, I don't know where he came from. And he said, um, can I help you? And I said, no, got it, thank you, I'm good. Like, I, I, have, I have this in mind. I know what I'm doing here. And he said, um, he stopped me then, and he looked me in the eyes, and he said, no, let me help you. And I thought, oh, gosh, did I look that bad? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I said, I, I took a breath, and it's a little risky, you know, at that moment. And I said, okay, all right. Can you help me? Sure. And so then he went, and I don't know where he went. He went to, to his truck somewhere, and he got a, one of those big power jacks, like the hydraulic ones, and he just put it under the car. Went up. Now we were really like NASCAR, right? And, um, and then he gave me a star. I had one of those cheap ones. He gave me a star, and so I put it on. He said, I can't, I, I can't actually undo the nuts because my shoulder hurts, but here. And so he gave it to me, and I did it, and I put on a new tire, spun them all up, put it down, and wow, and I still had time for my meeting. And I should say, by the way, I was dressed not like a pastor, but like a normal person, right? So he came up, and this was all, he had no idea I was a pastor. And, um, and he, he took the jack, and, he, and I put the tire in the back, and he was ready to leave. He, he, uh, before he did, I said, well, what, what do I owe you? And he said, uh, nothing. Um, God has already given me provision. I want to tell you that there are people like that all around us. People who God is already at work at in our lives, in your life. And if you take the time, and at times it may feel a little risky to just reach out to somebody new and allow them, maybe to serve you. Maybe to, that's one of the ways that this works. Um, and let them bring up God and then see where that goes that's the way church will grow. That's the way people will come to know the love and the goodness of God. That's how people will learn the Sabbath and its goodness and rest. So may you be blessed on this Sabbath from resting and abide in Christ. May you know the deep love that God has for you and your family, a love that is made perfect in weakness. And may you find a way to find one new friend or acquaintance this week that you can share a good news with God with them. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand and uh, sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God. Say
of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit and fed by the Word, we come together as the people of God, to pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God, our Father, we give you thanks for the provision that you have given us for this holy day of rest, for this day, the 5th of July, when you gather us together to remember all that has been suffered and borne for us that we might have life in this nation in which you call us to live and have that life in abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Dearest Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the suffering and sacrifice that you have borne for us. Give us strength and courage to leave this place, to go out into our neighborhoods, to humbly approach our sisters and brothers and share with them the good news that you love us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for your church throughout all the world. We pray for our bishops and pastors, our ministers and missionaries, who preach the word throughout the globe. Help us to participate meaningfully in the work of the church throughout the world. Help us to guide our nation, to accompany all the nations of the world in our journey together, our journey through history, the onward and upward path of history to God. We pray this day especially for all those in need. 
We pray for our sisters and brothers in Charleston as they grieve and mourn. We pray for our sisters and brothers in the Washington Metropolitan Synod and thank them for sharing Pastor Phil with us this day. We pray for Mary and Jacobine, for healing for her, and we pray for all of those that we now name, either aloud or silently in our hearts, before you, O Lord. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. continues with the sharing of our offering. <laughs> Every year I have the privilege of singing this song um, on the weekend of 4th of July. And every year, before I do, or as I'm preparing to, I pray that God would continue to bless the USA and the world in which we inhabit. If tomorrow all the things were gone that I've worked for all my life and I had to start again with just my children and my wife and then I'd thank my lucky stars to be living here today cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away now I'm proud to be an American well, at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died Who gave that right to me And I'll gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt that I love this land God bless the USA From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee 
And across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, and from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to L.A., where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time to stand and say, will you stand with us? Come on. But I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Now I'm proud to be an American. Well, at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Because there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Hello. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim of the blessing. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my, the, my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And he taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come and eat and drink. Uh, This morning we'll invite you to come forward by the center aisle and receive bread and dip it into the cup either of grape juice or, or wine, which is red, or grape juice, which you'll see is white. If you have a gluten-free, need a gluten-free option, that will be available to the side with both uh, the bread and gluten-free wine. Please. storms of life assail me without warning and though they try to steal my joy away I will find rest in knowing you have saved me precious Jesus Rock of my salvation Though times I stumble And fall short of your standard Rest assured There is love enough for me For I find strength In knowing you have saved me, precious Jesus, rock of my salvation. Oh, my Jesus, rock of my salvation, who bore the weight of Calvary's word and shame. And cleanse my sin in the crimson flow of mercy. Precious Jesus, rock of my salvation. Precious Jesus, rock of my salvation.
your only son no sin to hide but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified, they laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died, but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called a Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Oh, how He loves you and me. Oh, how He loves you and me. What gave His life? What more could He give? Oh, how He loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Jesus to Calvary did go. His love for sinners to show. Beautiful in your. 
your time. Lord, my life to you I bring. May each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing. In your time, in your time, in your time, in your time, you make all things beautiful. In your time, Lord, my life to bring. May each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing in your time. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Go make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them. Go make disciples, for I am with you till the end of time. Go, be the salt of the earth. Go, be the light of the world. Go, be a city on a hill, baptizing me. Go, make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them. Go, make disciples, for I am with you through the end of time. Go, be a salt of the earth. Go, be the life of the world. Go, be a city on a hill, so all can see that you're serving me. Go, make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them, go. <laughs> You're supposed to go. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't, well, <laughs> we tried to help you, but... Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I have to stop. May Almighty God and merciful Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Go in peace. Live in love as Christ has loved us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs> And I'm proud to be an American, well at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. I'm proud to be an American, well at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA.